Hello, I'm Ronald Hawkins, principal of Capital Prep Harbor Lore School. Welcome to Common Good Gardens here in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Today, we're going to explore this community garden with David King. So let's get started. Hi, Ron. I'm Dave King. I'm a volunteer here at the Common Good Garden in Old Saybrook, Connecticut, right behind the Grace Episcopal Church. Well, we have about 100 volunteers who actively work here in the garden during the growing season. We prepare the beds that you can see behind me. We plant them, we weed them, we do a lot of weeding. We harvest the produce and we donate it here to the Shoreline Soup Kitchen. About how much food do you collect each year? So on a good year, we can grow almost 8,000 pounds of vegetables to donate to the soup kitchen. Wow, that's a lot. So it helps people who are food insecure, which is a surprisingly high percentage of the population, even in a community as wealthy as Old Sabre. So what are ways that community members can get involved here? Well, we volunteer to take care of the garden. So uh, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, people can come work. Uh, it's very relaxed. You don't have to commit to any, any designated time. You come when you can. We also utilize people who drive the, the food and deliver it uh, and pick up extra vegetables from other, um, other sources like local gardens. So you shared with me earlier a little bit about how the garden started. Tell our scholars, how did this happen? Yeah, it's a good story. So it shows the power of one person. Uh, one woman had the idea to create the garden and she went through the communities uh, around the lower Connecticut River Valley and she asked could she start a garden and the Grace Episcopal Church um, kindly agreed to let us use their property. And how much land is here? Uh, it's only a half an acre but it's incredibly uh, abundant. Ron, let me show you around the garden. Awesome, let's go. Yeah, come this way. So you can see that we have the beds all numbered and there's a really uh, carefully planned out um, planting schedule for each of the beds so that they're maximized. Right now we have a lot of lettuce uh, coming that, that will grow in the early summer and when it's harvested then we'll plant more crops. So for example beans or tomatoes. Uh, here you can see a lot of broccoli. Oh. Uh, sorry, that's cabbage. Cabbage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, the other thing you can see is the irrigation system. So all the water is timed um, to use as little as possible. And then finally, the other thing about this garden is it's completely organic. And we accomplish that primarily through the use of compost. And I can show you uh, the composting operation in a second. Cool. Let's go there now. Okay. So Ron, what do you know about compost? Absolutely nothing except you can take eggshells and coffee grinds and add them to your garden. You can, yeah. So our uh, compost you see here, it's uh, 11 individual bins um, and there are a couple of keys to compost. The first is that you start the pile like a lasagna. So you layer brown material, which is carbon, with green material, which has a lot of nitrogen carbon's kind of like bread and the green material is kind of like meat. So you layer it up and then uh, keep it moist like a damp sponge and then you turn it about once a week, which is a lot of work. It's good for your muscles. Woo! Nice. So, what about mold? I'm curious, like why doesn't mold grow on compost? So if you didn't turn the compost, it would grow. So if you ever go to a pile and you smell it, it's stinky. Yeah. That's because it's become anaerobic. It doesn't have enough oxygen. So that one of the keys is to keep it oxygenated, oxygenated because the bacteria need, they need food. We've given them food. They need water. You have to keep it like a damn sponge and they need oxygen. Wow. So uh, if you do it properly, it's really fascinating. The bacteria, they're called anaerobic, uh, they're called uh, thermophilic bacteria. They go through a life cycle and they max out at hyperthermophilic, which is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Hyperthermophilic. Yeah, hyperthermophilic. Wow, that's a nice college word. <laughs> it is a nice word. 
And they take all the material you can see and turn it basically into rich soil. So it's full of nutrients that the plants love. And we take it from there and we put it out into the beds uh, twice a year in the fall and the spring. And that's our main source of nutrition for our plants. So I'm at home. What are some ways that I can create a compost at my own house? Um, it's very easy to do. So the, the key is make sure that you keep it oxygenated and don't let it get too wet. If you start it in a container uh, and, and it doesn't drain, it'll become really wet and mucky. So uh, just layer in some browns and some greens and keep it oxygenated and in six weeks time it'll be nice compost and by the way your coffee idea was a good one fantastic tell me a little bit so we're cleaning up our table and we have some salad left over can that go in the compost yes definitely the the one thing that you don't want to put in compost is any kind of meat or grease meat or grease. And the reason for that isn't that it won't become good compost, it's more that it will attract uh, animals. So it could attract, it, here it would attract raccoons, in a city setting it might attract rats. Uh, yeah, it, Muy malo. Yeah. That would we be don't bad. want that. <laughs> so I noticed also we have this trees and this fence behind you. Yes, that's our blueberry patch. Oh, blueberries. Wow. Yeah, so it's uh, a beautiful blueberry patch and actually we have to cover it with the netting because the birds people like oh, the blueberries, but birds really love blueberries and they will gobble them all up. So wow. now they're just in the flower stage and every one of those flowers is going to become a nice tasty blueberry. Wow, I see a mosquito loves right there. Do you guys see that? Mr. Mosquito is totally into blueberries. <laughs> so when will they harvest? Uh, July usually. July, okay. Yeah. Um, the mulch, I see the mulch over here. Right, so we use the mulch to keep down weeds on the paths. Um, you can see in the garden. That's really the only purpose for them. Okay, and all this is donated? Yes, uh, local arborists give us the chips, and, and this pile actually is last year's compost. So as the compost finishes, we pull it over here. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I'm sure. And you mentioned that you would get big muscles doing this. So. Yeah, and a sore back. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else in the property that our kids would find really cool? Uh, no, I, I, I think that's really the extent of it. Uh, so there are four main tasks that we do in the garden. The first is preparing the garden and planting. The second is weeding. The third is harvesting. And the fourth is the preparation at the end of the year. So for example, here you can see this bed hasn't been planted yet and it has all of these green weeds. All of this has to be removed by a volunteer, taken to our compost, and then uh, we add more fresh compost here and plant. So I think these are getting uh, squash. So I have a question about weeds because I don't know. How do you tell a weed from a flower? <laughs> yeah, um, my wife would say that I don't know how to. Uh, so be careful where you set me to weeding. OK. <laughs> um, but but the, there are um, educational programs called Master Gardener programs where you learn all of the intricacies of, of botany and how to, how to grow a good garden. Uh, and many of the volunteers here are, ma are master gardeners. So when I have a question, I ask them. So it's better to ask, then pull, then pull, then ask. Yes, you get a lot of, <laughs> in a lot of trouble if you pull the wrong thing. Oh my goodness. And here's an example of the mulch we just viewed. That's right, yeah. And uh, this is kind of cool. So these, are, I believe, are pea plants. Are they peas? Yeah, these are peas. And you can see they climb up this trellis. Oh, they're like a vine. Yeah, yeah see how they, the tendrils? Oh, yeah. And they'll just go march right up to the top. Wow. When will they harvest? Uh, I think in June. They're an early crop. Wow. Do you have to reseed the garden every year? Yes. These are all annuals. Annuals, Except, okay. Uh, this long bed is asparagus that comes back every year. And um, actually right outside is rhubarb that comes back every year. Um, 
again, you know, for me, the biggest lesson is that many hands make light work. With 100 volunteers, we're able to produce a lot of food for people who really need it. What's your favorite thing about the garden? The people. The people. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you.